It says now meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Okay. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. We um, were just, I guess we were warming up Dr. Claudia <laughs> uh, E. Smith. Everyone, uh, good evening. This is Reverend Sherry um, on Reset, and I uh, we are live on uh, TCP Network. So uh, welcome, everyone. I uh, was wondering where uh, you were at. Um, and so uh, surprise, surprise, we do not have Dr. Latinia uh, Shell. She had a uh, an emergency. So please keep her and her grandfather, her uh, family in prayer. Um, so we have instead uh, Dr. Claudia E. Smith. She's a counselor uh, and PhD. Before we move into our program, please invite others. Um, sharing on uh, Facebook with family and friends, like, tag, share, let us know you are out there, make your comments and your questions. So I'm going to move right along and our um, scripture, our scripture today comes out of Psalm 34 and it says, when the righteous cry out, the Lord listens, he delivers them from all their troubles. And I want to underscore, um, he delivers them. He delivers them from all of their troubles. 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those whose spirits are crushed. 19 says the righteous have many problems, but the Lord delivers them. He delivers them from everyone. The Lord delivers them from everyone. Is anyone crying out there? God is listening, ready to rescue you. That comes from the message. When the righteous cry out, the Lord listens. What does the Lord do? The Lord listens. He delivers them from all of their problems all of their troubles. That's the CEB uh, revision. And so here we are today. Uh, like I said, instead, uh, we have um, uh, uh, Dr. Claudia E. Smith with us, counselor, PhD. Dr. Latinia Shell had a family emergency. I'm going to do a, a prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for us coming together, Lord. We pray over uh, Dr. Latinia Shell's uh, family, Lord God. You know the situation. Guide them and direct them. Give her strength, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So welcome everyone to Reset and uh, let's talk. Let's talk about what? Let's talk about mental health. The reason why I want to talk about mental health, particularly I'm going to um, earmarking this to African-American women. Um, because we are, uh, these, this is not my research, but the research says that black women are twice as likely to experience a major mental health crisis uh, than their uh, black male counterparts. And um, why are we more likely um, to have, to be twice as likely to have a major uh, mental health crisis? And another question is, why don't we reach out for help? We are very good at putting on, in particularly, our, our mask, our church mask, um, and we suffer in silence. So today, let's talk. Open up. Um, be yourself. Let's be transparent. We have here today Dr. Claudia uh, E. Smith. Um, so welcome, welcome to Reset again with um, Reverend Sherry. So I'm going to jump right in it. Why are Black women twice as likely to experience a major mental health crisis than their Black uh, male counterparts? Reverend Sherry, thank you so much for the invitation. And I, I really appreciate being here. I think too with you of um, Dr. Latinia right now and the emergency she's facing. And certainly I appreciate your prayers and I join you in those prayers. And the question is so timely and relevant because oh, during the time of the COVID pandemic, 
it has been noted that the minority, the women of color have suffered extremely more than any other group at the hands of COVID. And that is not in, with exception to mental health stress. But the, the question you ask, why? Why is it that the black woman is more likely to be affected by mental health challenges and not seek help? I think yeah. it comes from the tradition. It comes from the history. It comes from the teachings, not only in the homes, but in the wider community and also in the church. The black woman is supposed to be strong, but in the home, the message was, our business stays in here. You don't take your business out into the streets. Nobody needs to know what is happening in our home. And that translates to nobody needs to know what's happening with you. You are required to put your smile on, put the yeah. lipstick on, go yeah. out there and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And don't let anybody be aware that you're hurting. And thus this term, you continue to suffer in silence. Yes. I, I, I am one that I've seen it time and again. And if you think back, when you look back at what it is and you look back at your parents and your grandparents, you mm -hmm. see where they were hurting, but it was considered weak. Yes. It was considered yes. weak for them to say out loud that something was wrong because yes. it was interpreted as a poor reflection on them. It was yes. a poor reflection on the family if something is wrong. Because isn't that the idea that everything is supposed to be hunky-dory in yes. everybody's home? Oh yeah. And especially if you're part of the church community, especially yes. if you have leadership roles, then yes. it's supposed to be ideal. All day, every day, it should be just sunshine and no rain. That is unfortunately the message that has been passed on for too long. Mm -hmm. But I believe, like you said, we are on the brink of change. Yeah. Something is changing because women are now recognizing that it's to their detriment to continue in this form and fashion. And they're embracing some alternate strategies to yeah. dealing with their personal issues without shame, without apology. Mm -hmm. Unapologetic. This, this, yes. this generation, uh, uh, um, some of the vocabulary that they use, unapologetic, I'm not apologizing. They also say, me care, it's time yes. for me. They also say, self-care. Now, those are words that I didn't grow up. I never heard my mom say, it's me time. Yes. I never heard my mother say, self-care. It was always about us, her children. Um, so, care. Yes, as things are gradually changing, but at the same time, things are staying the same because we are twice as likely to experience a major mental health crisis and not seeking help. And you had said it's tradition mm -hmm. not to share anything out in the street, right. to keep our mask on or our, or yes. our church keep mask the smile on. bright. Keep the bright, the, the bright smile and pretend that nothing is wrong. Nothing and, and there is another piece to that as well in terms of who we would turn to if we were facing any mental challenges. Because even before you say you're gonna seek help, there is a natural stigma that's attached to mental challenges, mental yes. issues. People often translate that to one word, crazy. Yes. You crazy. Yes. And so again, that is considered weakness and it is considered a stain on the family and the image of the family if you were to go out and say you're having a problem because somehow you should be equipped with the skills to deal with it and to keep it within the family frame. And outside of that, anybody who ventures into the world of the professional psychiatrist or counselor is now one, doing harm to the family because now you're taking the business to them. Mm -hmm. And two, you are crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, what greater challenge must that be than you are thinking I'm having problems, but if I go out there and do this and seek help, then I will have to come back and face all the negative that's gonna come from my own family because I'm trying to seek help. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, but it continues even today, 2021. People are hesitant to go to the psychiatrist because they say, these people don't know nothing, mm -hmm. how they can help you. Just pray about it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Pray about it. Take it to your pastor. Pray about it and everything will be okay. And it's time, time. Just, just stay with it and it will come. And this runs for years and there's no change, but it's discouraged. So I love the fact that people are embracing self-care and yes. me time yes. without any feeling of guilt. Guilt. There are yes. some who still struggle, but, but because it's hard to break that legacy. So the sense of guilt, mm. if you choose to set time aside for your own care, the sense of shame because you're not doing it exactly like how your mom used to do it or how your grandmother used to do it. So now you're throwing the legacy away. Mm. It's a lot of responsibility to do things different. Yes. But that's the only way the black woman will survive. Yes. And, and tell us about that, that black woman, that strong uh, women, uh, superwoman syndrome. And uh, you had talked about that there's uh, no boundaries with that. There, there are no boundaries. As you grew up, just like you said, Reverend Cherry, when you grew up, did you ever see your mom just sit down in the middle of the day? No. I, she, I have a hard time thinking back to if, when my mom was sick and in bed. I can't yes. remember that. Yes. Because they were taught to push through no matter what. No matter they what. They needed to be there for each child and every child, not just their own, sometimes for children in the neighborhood. Yes, the neighborhood children. <laughs> but you were required to be that. And so this idea developed that because that's what's being perpetuated, you become the superwoman. You literally get up in the morning, throw your cape on, and you fly through the day, and nothing should halt your steps or fall to your steps. And that is it. So there are no boundaries. If somebody comes and says, can you do this? What is the answer? Before you even hear the question, what? Oh, yes. sure, yes. yes. And, and yes. in the middle of that, somebody else asks, oh, yes. And in the middle of that, your own children will need something and you're running. So you're running 50 different positions and places because you feel your responsibility is to be all for everyone. Yes. And the, to the detriment, because there is no time for the self-care. And when illnesses came about and they were not addressed, it was to the physical demise of women. It's also known that women, Black women, are more likely to suffer from hypertension. Yes. Diabetes. Yes. The, the, list, the list is endless. Yes. And, and we're more likely to die from breast cancer. And more likely to die from breast cancer. Why is that? Because Oftentimes we are, because yeah. we're on the go. We can't take time for doctor's visits. That, yes. That's gonna mess up my schedule. I can't yes. go there and sit and wait because this has to be done and that has to be done. So everybody else's need will be addressed except for the woman. They yes. can't do the routine visits. When there are indications that something is wrong, what mm -hmm. is done, you dismiss it. You say, oh, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, we go away. Or you'll try some home remedy. But do you get it checked? No. And when you end up getting it checked, usually it's because it's too late. Yes. That, yes. that, that is the unfortunate stage. You're already of in the fourth stage. You're Whereas already, already more, more yes. of the uh, uh, white women, uh, their breast cancer is detected in more of the first stage. Earlier Whereas stages. With us, we are uh, in At the uh, stage four. It has stage advanced. Four. Yes. Advanced stages because yes. we did not. And even if we detect, and, and again, it comes to education because mm -hmm. part of the process requires the self-examination. But yes. remember what I said, the, the work I do has to do with issues of sexuality. So the taboo around just even examining yourself just where examining if you're ourselves. doing that, something is wrong because you're not supposed to be touching yourself prevents oh. black women from doing the breast examination. And so it feeds into this whole idea that I am not good enough. I am not deserving of those few minutes. I'm not deserving of the doctor's visit that is gonna determine how I am physically and medically and will be able to implement a strategy to help me to get better. Mm -hmm. We make up excuses all the time to avoid doing those steps for self-care. Wow. Um, everyone out there, Dr. Claudia E. Smith is located here right in Lancaster. Where are you located? I'm located in Lampeter. 
am in Lampeter. I have a home office right now. It's all online because of COVID. I am not seeing anybody in person, but I am here to give permission for people to speak with confidence about issues of sexuality. There is no shame in talking about these issues because I am watching the numbers go up with relationships that are on the decline because we cannot find the words to have these conversations. People are hurting in silence. People are victims of sexual trauma and struggle in their relationships because of that, but they cannot find the words to have the conversation. I'm here. People have issues of low desire, sexual desire, desire incompatibility, the list is endless. Gender identity. We're in Pride Month. LGBTQ individuals are hurting because they cannot find the space to have conversations that address issues that are causing them pain. I'm here. Look for me, www.intimacyandpleasure.com. I'm on Psychology Today. Mm -hmm. Find me, let us have the conversation. I'm here because I believe we all deserve healthy, fulfilling, satisfying relationships. Now, you're not only, you have, you're a counselor, you have your PhD, um, and you also have a uh, theology degree, a master's in- Master's uh, in religion, yes. In, in, master's in religion. So even when people are coming to you and when we um, look at scripture, like Psalm 34, when the righteous cry out, the Lord listens, he delivers them, from all their troubles and to give us permission that it is all right. Um, that, you know, of course we're going to seek God, but it's all right. If we seek professional help, uh, for us, it does not question our faith. It does not question our, um, that we're weak or that we're um, not waiting, be still and know that I'm God, yeah. that we are not waiting for God to deliver us. It's okay for us to seek um, professional help. I think that's the most important thing for us, that it is okay for us to seek. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Histor historically, we've gone to our mothers, to our fathers, to our yes. grandparents, uh, grandmothers, uh, we've gone to our pastors, uh, leadership in, in the church. Nothing is wrong with that, but we are talking about seeking um, professional, professional help. So yeah. how, how do we support people with mental health issues? How do we um, bring up the right words? How do we talk uh, um, to them about this, uh, particularly the ones that are in church and when yes. we are believers of uh, Jesus uh, Christ. How do we put our Reverend words Sherry, together? That is an, a very important question and I appreciate you asking it. I think what we need to remember is that God provides in all forms, yes. right? Yeah. He, he promises and he, he lives up to every promise. And here it is that he has provided us with people who have been gifted with the knowledge. In the same way we rely on our pastors to bring yes. the message, we have other professionals that have been gifted to provide us with guidance. I yes. believe wholeheartedly that it is our responsibility as Christian people mm -hmm. to embrace the skills and abilities that have been given to us in the form of professionals. Mm -hmm. If we have a fire, Reverend Sherry, Yes. Do you call a dentist? No. Or do you call your neighbor? Your no. neighbor doesn't know anything about putting out a fight. Well, unless they're a fireman person, but we set, we go to the people who are trained. Right. And so when I think of mental health challenges, we might have a pastor who's trained for pastoral counseling. There might be that situation, but there often isn't. So I think it's important for me to say to my congregant, if you are having issues with depression, I recommend that you see a therapist, that you yes. see a counselor. And I don't think it is responsible for the pastor to take on care, mental health care of the congregation unless he or she is trained in that area. Mm -hmm. It's important that there be a good fit. And sometimes though we have our pastor, 
we don't necessarily want to start that other kind of relationship with our pastor. So I say, find the resources. Psychology Today is a good source. You might know a friend who can refer. And if you Google therapists, counselors in the area, then you have the opportunity to comb through their bio, to comb through their approaches, and then to explore whether it's a good fit, because that's important. Find the person who you feel is a good fit for the issues that you're facing. Because if you're not comfortable in that relationship, you're not going to benefit. And you deserve to be in a space where you feel safe, where you feel like you can trust the individual you're sharing with, because it's sensitive information you're going to be sharing. But I encourage it wholeheartedly. Professionals are provided by this one God who gives us these gifts and these talents. They don't come from us. They right. come from God. So he right. has provided them. It's our resp responsibility to, to, to acknowledge and to access them. Mm -hmm. So I um, support that. One of the ladies put uh, Christine, uh, Minister Christina Latson said, Zora Neale Hurston said, Black women are the mules of the world. Um, that we are the mules of the world. We hold everybody yes. up. Yes. And when is the time for us? There's us. a quote that says you couldn't heal because you kept pretending you were not hurt. And you That's address it. that you couldn't heal, that we couldn't heal because, because we were too busy taking care of everybody of else because that's what our tradition taught us because we kept pretending that we were not hurt. How are you doing, Sherry? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm blessed That's by it. the best. God is That's good. It. And then they will reply all I call the, it the time. Answer. I, yes. call, I call it the rehearsed answer, Reverend Sherry. Rehearsed, so I like that. The rehearsed answer is they don't even, they don't even have to pause. How are you doing? I'm good. So my strategy is tell me what you mean by your good, Reverend Sherry. Now, most wow. times when I do that, people get confounded like, what? I said, yeah. because you didn't even think about it when I asked you, you just right. gave me the rehearsed answer. You're being socially polite. Right. So you say, I'm good, I'm fine. What does that mean? And oftentimes when you pause or when you take that second question, then people feel like you're really interested in hearing what's going on with them. Unfortunately, we do a lot of, I'm asking, but I really don't want the answer. So that's why you go, oh, God is good all the time. I'm like, well, but God told you to pause and really check in on your sister or your brother. Yes. Take yes. a minute and really ask them how yes. they're doing. Yes. Because sometimes we can see it if we look. Yes. We can see that something is not right with the demeanor. Yes. And because you know it's not the tradition, it's not the accepted way for people to put their business out there, sometimes you have to give them quiet permission. You have to let them know that you're really interested in hearing and you're available to take the time and listen. Mm -hmm. But you have to take that step. So we will, we will be under that image of the mule to carry the burden. Do you know what a, yes. what a mule does? Yes. The load yes. and load. We are, that's yes. what we're seen as. We can take the burden and they, you know what people in the church say, God won't give you more than you can bear. And where is that found? I, there we go. I but don't they'll know. tell you, they will tell you the good word says it. Yes. And they said, if he brought you to it, he'll take you through. Okay, hold on. But right now I'm struggling. I yes. need some help because right now I'm struggling. Can right. you sit with me because I'm struggling and because the burden feels so much that I feel like I can't go on? We have that Christian responsibility for our neighbor, for our brother yes. and for our sister to right. take the time to hear how they are and to help them lighten the load that they're carrying out of shame out of ignorance, out of the need to maintain the tradition. It's a lot of responsibility. Yes, wow. To listen, to take the help, the, alleviate the load. Yes. Um, but yeah, and the, the shame, the shame, the shame. What comes with it. Because we know our bodies. We know when we're not 
feeling right, right. that something is it's different. Normal. Something feels different. Uh, we may call it uh, because we have so many terms to get around that word depression. Oh, yes. you know, you, we lack energy. I'm not mm -hmm. feeling well today, right. but we seldom say I am depressed or we right. will say a dark cloud, a yes. black cloud. Yes. You know, it will lift. I, it yeah. Will change. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and, it, and particularly with this time where we were quarantined, where we yes. didn't know what was going on, where we had disproportionately um, uh, COVID killing, ravishing yes. our community. Our community. Yes, you know, we absolutely. were really scared for our elderly, our loved ones, yes. um, even uh, our young people who, who um, got uh, COVID, you know, yes. because... Uh, many of us, unfortunately, have um, those uh, other diseases that you talked yes. about, the diabetes, yes. the high, mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Um, so, yeah. So um, when we talk about um, when we talk about tradition and when we talk about our when we talk about tradition in the United States, you can't talk about tradition <laughs> without going to slavery, which was yes. traumatized. You can't. You, we can't talk as if it never existed because those things affected us from generation to generation, generation. to Absolutely. generation. Um, and I remember when the Surgeon General said, Big Mama, uh, so many people came down on him. But just having that image of Big Mama, um, and we know of Big Mamas in our community uh, the mother that that could you know everybody went to to yes. for help to seek guidance uh to pray for us you yes. know um thank god for those 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 women but when we talk about our tradition we're talking about uh slavery we're talking yes. about trauma we're talking yes. about um learning things um and and traditionally when we had a problem we went to church on sunday and we got happy and we That's danced it. and we shouted and that was our counsel way of addressing it yes yes That's and it. we were to leave it at the altar altar yes but what leave happened to monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday we took it to the altar yeah and then we picked it back up because it was in our, our heads. mind. Yes. And that's what you're talking about, that to give yourself permission to go right. seek professional help. help. Yeah. And, you know, Reverend Sherry, when you say it like that, I realize, too, that it's difficult to ask somebody to do something that they don't have a clue what it looks like. Yeah. You remember, we've been talking this whole time about maintaining the tradition and the legacy because we have images, we have big mamas that we can yes. think of right away that we can really copy their behavior and try to even be anything close to who they were in the community. Yes. But if we don't have a point of reference for the person who said, wait a minute, I'm tired. Yes. I'm gonna take 15 minutes from me right now Everybody take care of yourself. I am going to take 15 minutes. Then it makes it even more difficult for you to give yourself permission to do it. Yes. In the same way, if you can't think of anybody who you know has been to a counselor, has been to a psychiatrist, without that negative stigma attached to it, it yes. again becomes something that is really out there. But I am sitting right here today saying, I have been behind the desk, looking at people who are scared, mm. scared at the prospect of coming in, sharing their intimate private details and not knowing what's gonna happen. There are spaces where you can share these bits of information and have a professional demonstrate respect, absence of judgment, compassion and care for you. That's what it's about. And you always have the option, if you're in that space and you don't feel cared for, you have the option of leaving that space and finding another person. And but it's all confidential. 
and it is all confidential. There should be no sharing of your business because you can hold that professional to the standards that is similar to what we know in, in the hospitals, especially the HIPAA. It's for only those people who are related to your care. It's not to be shared in the supermarket. So there is nothing to fear. It's the, the professionals are here. I am one of them waiting to provide you with the care you need to talk about the hard things that your mother never talked about, that big mama never talked about. I still meet women who said, I was never allowed to say the word sex. I'm on Facebook saying sex right now, but to the detriment because they weren't able to allow that in their parenting of their children and the legacy continued. So I want to break it. I okay. want to break that. I want to say, our church people are also sexual beings. They also have history of trauma. They also are impacted in their relationships. They also have challenges that they're not sure how to address. There is space. There is someone out wow. there you can talk to. And I'm wow. one of them. Yes, yeah, so we have to break that legacy. We have to begin to um, really open up and trust one another. And we have to stop the rehearse um, uh, things that we are, re the rehearsed responses yes. that we hear all the time. Mm -hmm. And maybe after hearing that rehearsed statement, mm -hmm. really ask them, how are you really feeling? That's it. Yes. Right. How are now, you really Now tell feeling? me how you really are. You yes. did the rehearse. Tell yes. me how you really yes. are. Because I know you look good. Your, your yes. makeup is yes. to the T. You're On dressed point. from head to toe. To toe. I'm yes. looking at you, girl, if mm -hmm. I could just say that. But I noticed that there's something different going on, something yes. that is different. different. Many times our pastors say that when you first join the church, you know, you're really enthusiastic and you're sitting up front and then gradually you are one of those people that sit, begin to sit in the middle of the, the pews or, and then you, the church and then close the to the end, door and then out. So out how do door. we, how do we change those um, repeat things in our head that we can't go to counseling, um, mm -hmm. that we are weak, or are, are, uh, where's your faith, uh, challenging those things. What you're telling us is that we have permission uh, from ourselves to yes. seek professional help. help. And that we don't the have message. to, yes, change the language. I change like that. Change the language you're telling yourself. Change, change the, language. the narrative. That just like your show says, reset, 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 change reset the language. Yes. yes. And change that channel, the channel yes. that is stuck on the past and how your mama and her mama did it. Right. Change that channel change and say, it. now this is 2021. I need to do different for me and it's okay. Right. And it's I need to do different for me and it's okay. And it's okay. And it's okay. Change change yes. transform change. the renewing of your mind reset yes. reset, reset reset your mind and yes. as a result of you resetting um you are uh going to feel much better take that load off one of the yes. sisters had earlier sent me um pictures of her backyard. She redid her backyard. She has a chair out there, an umbrella out there. And I said, wow, that is your place of refuge. That is your place yes. of peace. Absolutely. Finding those spaces that it's okay for you to have. And wow, yes. um, uh, Sister Judy McLeod said, we need more doctors like Dr. Smith. Well, Dr. Smith is in our community right Absolutely. here in Lancaster. And yes. um, not only Dr. Smith, but her husband also yes. has a private practice. He also has many degrees and a doctor, a doctorate in um, theology. In too, theology and in ministry, yes. In ministry also. So you are getting people... Um, that are highly educated, that are in the community. And I see other people on that are from outside of Lancaster, but Google, 
Google yes. and get yes. help. And even what you could do is go in and interview them. You could interview them because you said it should be a, a good, good fit. fit. Absolutely. A good fit. So it not every person is going to be a good fit, fit. for you. Yes. And you you had also said that if there you know, uh, is a fire, we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to call the fire person. Fire person. So we have to be very select that yes. if we know yes. that our body is not right and our yes. thoughts are not right, giving ourselves permission to seek professional help, yes. going out to make sure that it is a right fit not yes. everybody is a right fit for you mm -hmm. not everybody is going to be sensitive to our your story uh, our to your history. story and your needs yes in our story and our needs so when we started off we said let's talk why are black women twice as likely to experience a major mental health crisis than their male counterparts? We want to change that. Why are black women half as likely to reach out for help as their Caucasian counterparts? We want to change, change that in Jesus that. name. And we yes. know the word, the word, the righteous cry out. Yes, we cry out the oh, Lord yes. and the Lord listens. But like you said earlier, the Lord has given you all those gifts. The all professionals that professionals are there. Go yes. ahead and say it, doctor. The professionals are there. That is the response. You cried out, the Lord heard you. And he said, go to the counselor, go to the therapist. Go to the clinical sexologist. I have provided them for you to address the needs you keep crying out to me about. But you keep saying, oh, Lord, I'm waiting. And he keeps saying, but I sent the people to you. They're there. You just yes. need to make the call. Make yes. the call because you deserve better. You deserve better. Do not disregard what you're feeling. Do not discount the lingering thoughts that have been with you for more than a month. And you keep saying, I'm going to be OK. You can be OK today if you take that step. Take yes. the step because you deserve better. God has given you the gift of professionals. Yes, he has. Um, and I, I love what you said. And we you, you could go, you could meet with that counselor, you could see if it's a, a special fit, if you have to go back and pray on it, discern yes. it, and yes. um, and if that's not a special fit, there are other professionals. Is Move anyone crying one. out there for help? I'm reading the word. I'm not reading what Sherry was saying. Is yes. anyone crying for help out there? God is listening, ready to rescue you. There is no reason why we um, are doing things that our foremothers and forefathers did. We do not have to be uh, suffering uh, in silent. silent. We don't have to suffer in silent because yes, of our no our leadership in the in the church, our position in the church, and we have to be strong. We are taking away that superwoman, black woman syndrome. I, it, I'm burning it, the, I'm burning yes, it. I've burned yes, it. No more. Yes. No more. All of us. Burn it, burn it, burn. Burn, no baby, burn. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Burning that. Yes. yes. So be who you are, be your authentic self and name what you need because you are due the help. You yes. are, it's okay. It's okay for you to have needs. You yes. have permission to have your personal needs not constantly be to taking uh, taking care of the needs of everybody else. Yes. Yeah. Remember I told you about the plane, the oxygen mask? Yes, they say that again. You, the oxygen mask when you're taking a flight, the attendants will tell you before you do anything else, put the mask on yourself and they say that because they say no matter how much you love that other person, if you're passed out, you can't help them. So if you don't it. take care of you, you're not going to be in a position to take care of anybody else. Yes. And we're, um, we're not saying you're selfish. We're saying you have to take care of yourself in order to be a better person, person. for other people. 
Absolutely. So we thank you. Reset means to change. It means to adjust. Yes. It means to shift, to transition, transform. We are transforming the renewing of our mind. Reset yes. your mind. Look at things differently. If you need help, seek help. Again, yes. you know, we are talking about it. I don't know how many times I could say it, but um, the reason why we we even die earlier and we die Absolutely. earlier than our, our Caucasian sisters yes. um, because we do not seek help, because we do not go and get our medical care. And there's yes. a lot of things. We put everything aside yes. for somebody else. Yes. And when we set those doctor's appointments, go to them. and Keep them. Keep yes, them. And keep them. And be present to the appointment. Yes. Yes. Not sitting there thinking or on your phone trying to take care of somebody else even while you're in front of the doctor. The time you set aside for you, embrace that time for you. Raise yes. issues. Don't sit in silence and think the doctor can read your mind. Right. Say what is going on with you without fear. Right. Because if you don't tell them, they won't know. It's not by magic. It's by conversation. Right. And that's all part of our mental health. That is yes. all part of how we feel. We can't feel a certain way and expect our husbands just or or, and, or whomever to figure out what's going oh, on with us. Mm -hmm. We are intelligent beings and we should be able to go to the doctor and explain, even if you have to write it down, type it Thank out you. or whatever, have bullet points and mm -hmm. bring it in with you to, to have um, that time with you and your doctor. It could either be your medical doctor or you seek uh, help from a therapist, a counselor. And I am so glad that we have you. Um, we have you in our community. We have uh, your husband art in our community. Um, and we also have others uh, like uh, yes. Dr. Latinia uh, yes. Shell we have yes. in our community. So no excuse Black no women. excuses. Absolutely no, no excuses. excuses. You no deserve excuse. it. Claim it. Yes. You deserve it. Claim it. Yes. I am here. Psychology yes. Today, you can find me. WWW Intimacy and Pleasure, you can find me. I'm available. And if you need to do that 15 minutes conversation prior, just to get a sense of whether we're a good fit, give yes. me a call. Send me a text. Yes. I'm right here. Yes, thank you so much. Do you have, um, so I should write that in the, say it again, um, how they could get in contact with you. I can be found on Psychology Today, Dr. Claudia Smith, Claudia E. Smith. I'm also be, I'm on um, the internet, Google, www.intimacyandpleasure.com. I'm located in Lampeter all online services. So there's no excuse about time. You just need to have a phone or a, a laptop with a camera. And everybody has a smartphone these days with a camera. I can talk to you via that online platform. So it's right at your fingertips, literally. If you have a phone, that means you can connect with me. It's yeah. that easy. Put me in, that plug me, read about me if you want to see us get a sense of what I do and how I do it. I'm available and my intention is just to provide space for conversation that is difficult to have, but important to have. One that will encourage improved relationship. If you're not in a relationship, there is a sense of self sometimes that limits you in what you do. I am here to give you that permission to address these lingering challenges that you have held or you have kept in secret and in silence for too long. Yes. Well, we no thank more. you. We thank you, Dr. Claudia E. Smith. Thank you so much. Um, if you need to um, contact her, she gave you uh, uh, where she could be um, reached. Um, and she's doing everything online so you um, could live outside of the area. So please give yourself permission to yes. um, 
seek help. So um, our uh, upcoming shows next week, we're not going to have any reset. We were going to have uh, Tina Wells, which was an, uh, is an American entrepreneur and writer, uh, this young woman who has a buzz marketing group. We're going to um, reschedule with her. But listen up, everybody. Virtue Conference. We are having a virtue conference called Reset Your Mind. Thursday, June 24th, Friday, uh, June 25th, and Saturday, June 26th. It's going to benefit hashtag Kevin Strong, which is uh, my late husband who died from a, a five-year battle of cancer. And we are going to raise money for cancer survivors. We have a memorial fund at Brightside Baptist Church. We will give the money to Brightside Baptist Church for cancer survivors. We are a blessing to cancer survivors. Um, and uh, yeah, so I know firsthand about the financial devastation when someone yeah. is sick and what happens within the family. Um, so what we try to do is just be a blessing for you. And that scripture is, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. That is what we are all about. Reset, reset, change the way that you think. Even with our subject today, let's talk African-American women with mental health. Reset, reset your mind and change the way that we have all been raised uh, yes. to think even with grief and loss, how we suffer in silence. So yeah. some of our speakers are Pastor Stephen Michael uh, Lewis, who um, is a, a frat brother uh, of my late husband of Cap Alpha Psi, Reverend Brenda Lupton, my um, sister-in-law, Reverend Minister Tamara Knight from Brightside, the First Lady and uh, Minister at Brightside Baptist Church. Pastor Robin Whaley, a, a sorority sister of mine, Delta Sigma Theta, Pastor Tyra from New York, Pastor Oma Tayo from New York, Minister Naisha Solemn from Brightside Baptist Church, uh, Sister Hope Sawyer, a young woman that's going to speak to young women about their issues, reset, changing, musical guest, uh, Michelle Sutton, a powerful, powerful a uh, beautiful um, anointed woman who sings uh, just beautifully. And we, on Friday, uh, we, on the June 25th, we will have seven powerful prayer warriors for an hour praying. And that won't be on Facebook. The other two will be on Facebook, but this will that you would come on Zoom, but it's not going to be live on Facebook because we are praying for our nation. We are praying for our country. We are praying for each other. We are praying for our pastors and our leadership and our congregation. We are praying for our youth. We are praying against gun violence, which is just raging all of our community. Absolutely. So we are getting busy. And so we don't want to put that out on Facebook because if we need to scream, we need to scream. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, yes. hear our prayer. You heard what yes. we said earlier about is anyone crying out there yes. for help? Yes. Because the Lord yes. listens. Mm -hmm. He listens. So we thank you, Dr. Claudia. Uh, e. Smith, we thank you so much of stepping in for, um, because Dr. Uh, Latinia Shell, um, you j just some educated sisters. Oh my goodness. But um, you know what? It's all God. It's all God. Yes. Look at God. Look yes. At God. God be the glory. glory. So we just yes. thank you. Everyone, thank you for coming on. Um, a little transparency because I'm doing this myself before my son and daughter-in-law would help me. But we had live on Facebook and her and I were talking and it wasn't live. actually on Facebook. So it was a practice run that we yeah, had we that we were talking. But thank you. Just thank you. You just um, lifted me up that no, 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 no suffering in silence. My no sister. more. No more. No more. No more. The take, that, away. take that strong woman's black syndrome off you and let's be real. Take yes. the, 
get rid of that recorded message. How you doing, uh -huh. girl? Oh, I'm blessed by the best. No, uh -uh. just stop and think about it and speak, speak truth in love. Yes. Speak on respond honestly. I like that. I, I'm feeling crappy today. That's okay. I, I'm not so good today, but don't do the rehearsed because yeah. that's disrespecting your own feelings. Yes. yes. Speak truth Thank and you. love. Thank you, yes. Jesus. So everybody out there, God bless you. God bless your um your your practice god bless you and your family you. i know that you, you are a mother of adult children and yes. you are a grandmother so god bless you and your family uh, until our our paths meet again Cross everybody again. out thank there thank you reverend love cherry you thank and you thank again. you god bless you peace to you thank you and also to you